The next segment is courtesy of Metastetics Miami, located at the University of Miami Hospital. You can find us online at www.metastheticsmiami.com or by phone at 305-356-7402. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Good morning, everybody. This is Rosanna's chat. Today we have John Garrido. John is the founder and CEO of Life Science Technologies, a company whose mission is to help doctors turn their brilliant ideas into exciting and often life-saving new products. We met again playing tennis, and I was very impressed with John's accomplishment. He is a very knowledgeable. His expertise is in radio frequency, and today we are going to be speaking about the impact of radio frequency treatments, the different treatments and equipments out there to treat your skin. So let's welcome John Garrido. John, are you there listening to us? Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. I appreciate it. I am very impressed with your background, and I would like to start by asking you, how did you get into all of this? Uh, let's tell us a little bit about your story. Well, the, um, the use of radio frequency um, is, goes back uh, as far as I was involved uh, back, in, back to 1973 um, when I did work at... Uh, UCLA in the dental department, uh, where they use radio frequency uh, and still use it today, as a matter of fact, for cutting gingival tissue around teeth. So that's where where I was introduced to radio frequency for the first time, and um, its application was in dentistry. So that's where it began for me, but it actually began in the medical field back as far as 1940. Wow, it's come a long way for sure. And how did you get involved in all of this? Well, um, I had uh, my my uh, father-in-law was a dentist and an engineer, and he developed uh, a number of different dental products and had a small dental company. When I uh, graduated from college, I started to work in the company while I was in school. And uh, then when I went to law school, I went to Brooklyn Law, and I was working there as well. He passed away uh, while I was in law school, and I took a leave of absence to run the company. It was a very, very small company, and um, I, that's how I became uh, involved with it. Okay, pretty amazing how life turns right and brings us to the right path. So anyway, tell us about radio frequency. How does it impact the skin? What did you learn in all these years of working with it? Well, originally, uh, radio frequency energy was used, uh, in, you know, in the early days, it was called electrocoagulation. And its, its main use was to stop bleeding. And later on, um, it was discovered that uh, by putting a wire on the end of the uh, handpiece, you could also cut the tissue. You could sever it and it would stop bleeding at the same time. So the use of radiofrequency energy was basically used as a surgical tool for cutting uh, and coagulating tissue. So from there, and again, this goes back to the 1940s where the ENT surgeons would use the radio frequency in a bipolar mode to um, insert, they would have two needles and they would insert it into the uh, turbinate, which is in the nose. Enlarged turbinates okay. caused uh, a lot of problems for patients, so they were, were able to take the two wires and place them in, insert them into the turbinate for a couple of seconds, and it would volumetrically reduce the size of the turbinate from inside. So that was the first use of radio frequency, and again, it was in the bipolar terminal, and that was used for reducing mm -hmm. tissue. So they realized that the heat could be placed inside the tissue and it could reduce in size. And that was the earliest uh, form of what we see today with skin tightening. Got it. So then it was extended to the skin by con uh, con constricting the tissue, right, tightening it up? Well, what happened was uh, they, they started to see that, um, and again, it, it went from there to about 1989 um, when orthopedic surgeons started to uh, find that they could use this for the shoulder and the knee for submucosally reducing the, uh, the, the tissue, the cartilage tissue, um, and correct some of the uh, orthopedic problems. And then um, Thermage, a uh, few years after that, uh, 
developed the Thermage unit for the, uh, sh- the skin tightening with the uh, large uh, diameter electrode, which would be uh, placed over the skin on the face or the forehead area to basically heat the collagen and to denaturize it, which would contract uh, the uh, the uh, skin and through the collagen denaturization, so that's that's how it evolved uh, to uh, to Thermage, which was I guess it was 2002 when they when they first got their their FDA approval, and their FDA approval in 2002 was was not for skin tightening, it was for electrocoagulation. Yeah. Why would people electrocoagulate their skin and not tightening? What was what was the difference? Back okay, then? well the, the because electrocoagulation was well known to the FDA. So what happened was, rather than to, to try to get an FDA approval on, uh, on skin tightening, which was a new uh, concept, and it would be very difficult for the FDA to, uh, to um, approve that uh, without numerous uh, studies, Dermage was able to get an electrocoagulation approval to use it for skin tightening, and then I think they finally got their skin tightening approval 2008 or 2009, so it was a couple oh, wow. years after that. I understand there are different types of radio frequency from monopolar, bipolar, tripolar. Any advantages, any differences? Can you talk about that? Today, it's widely known that uh, through studies that the, mm-hmm. the most intense use of radio frequency energy for skin tightening is in the monopolar type where... For instance, you have a, a ground plate, which the patient sits on, and then you have the uh, handpiece with the electrode that uh, is, is moved over the skin. So the intensity of monopolar is, is well known to be the, the best method for skin tightening. Then there are variations, and the bipolar uh, eliminates the ground plate that the patient sits on and basically puts the uh, electrode next to each other in terms of this. So there's, there's two poles next to each other separated by an insulation medium. So uh, that is a less intense energy of, uh, of uh, radio frequency. And then, of course, tripolar is, is three poles. So um, there are many, many different variations of, the, of radio frequency energy, but well-known and uh, well-understood is the monopolar method. Now, thermage and Peleve are the, the most intense uh, monopolar uh, radio frequency energy sources for skin tightening. It, that, you know, that, as, it goes back to many uh, studies that have been done comparing these devices. So if you were a person trying to decide what treatment to do on their skin and you have these options, what would you recommend? If you're interested in... in uh, uh, kind of a, um, a, a method or a technique or a procedure that's non-invasive, uh, then obviously my feeling is monopolar uh, radio frequency energy, either in Thermage or in Peleve. Um, I, ha- I happen to have developed the Peleve system, um, and I believe that it's a safer system than Thermage. But the fact is, is that, um, you know, th- those devices are, are really quite, uh, quite powerful and really do have a, a good um, uh, result from, you know, from the studies that have been done with thousands of patients, controlled studies. Um, the, uh, there are some newer technologies that are coming out, and I think uh, they're worth taking a look at um, and understanding. One is the microneedling, uh, which again is radio frequency, just just uh, introduced in a different way. Um, okay. So those are important considerations. Uh, I also think it's important to to look into who's doing the procedure and how much training they have had. Um, in Good. many of the diff- in many of the different uh, uh, clinics and offices. Uh, Physicians delegate to estheticians, uh, even staff uh, other than estheticians. And, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think knowing and understanding whether the, the people that are, uh, that are uh, doing these treatments are well-trained, I think that's very important. That's very key. That's such a good point. I did want to go back and ask you, how about fractional radio frequency? What are your thoughts on um, that? 
Yeah, again, the fractional, uh, all different variations of radio frequency. And um, as I said right in the beginning, the, today, you know, the, the devices that have been really proven to be the best methods today and the best technology today are, are the basic monopolar uh, radio frequency energy and um, the, the different variations uh, are, you know, are just coming out now and don't really have the studies to back them up. So, um, you know, they're coming and, and they may. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that they don't have, you know, that, they, okay. that they're not good methods and good techniques. Uh, what I'm saying is, is that they really don't have the support yet that I'd like to see um, if, if I was having work done. Okay, that makes a lot of sense for sure. You want to make sure you, you're using something that's been tested before. So going to yeah, the different equipment. Yeah, and has and has a good track and has a good track record. Um, and of course, number one is to make sure anything that's being used uh, is FDA approved. I mean, that's easily uh, any uh, person who's considering having some uh, anti-aging procedures done. Uh, I think. You need to know the equipment that's going to be used, and you need to do a little bit of research. It's not difficult to do today with the computer. It's easy to, to do Google searches on different devices and get to know right. and get to understand um, as a layperson what's being used on you. And I think sometimes we, we just figure that the doctor is going to do the best thing, and, and I don't think that's a, that's a good policy. I think we need to do a little research into what's, what's being used. Well, thank you so much. John, for being with us today. You've been very, very informative. Any questions for John, anybody who's listening, please send them to us at Metastetics Miami. Our email is info at metastheticsmiami.com. We look forward to having John again and um, consider your aesthetics decision before making a final choice. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you for listening. We are Metastetics Miami, located at the University of Miami Hospital. You can reach us online at www.metastheticsmiami.com or by phone at 305-356-7402. We look forward to hearing from you and sharing our next segment with you.